So next up on our table saw upgrade series, we're gonna be talking about improving the dust collection of your table saw. So we're gonna talk about how you can use some aluminum tape to seal in some of the holes to make for a better seal, how you can use some magnet sheets like these to block off bigger openings that you need to be able to move to adjust, for example, when you adjust the height of the saw, how you can build your own template pieces like this to cover the back of the saw if you have a outboard motor, and how if you have a shop vac for dust collection, you can add an Oneida dust deputy and really improve the efficiency of your dust collection. So stay tuned. So the very first thing we're gonna talk about is using some aluminum tape to seal off the saw to the table, the openings and the air gaps that you might have. This is gonna be especially helpful if you have a hybrid saw like I do, which is not a pure, true cabinet saw. And by doing this, you're gonna be able to improve the sealing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take pieces of aluminum tape and basically stick it to the side of the saw and wrap it up and over. It doesn't have to be that pretty. You're not gonna really see it. And try to seal this as best as you can. You're not aiming for a perfect seal because you need air to come through to replace the air that the dust collector is sucking out of your cabinet. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is is build a little template like this in the event that you have a outboard motor on your saw. If you have a cabinet saw or a direct drive saw, you're not gonna need this step. But if you have a motor that hangs out the back like I do, this is gonna be pretty important to be able to seal the back of the saw. So here, this is just quarter inch wood that I cut into this shape. And then I just drilled a couple of holes for the magnets here that allowed me to just stick it and on and off from my table saw. So to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna first use a piece of cardboard. I would recommend using a piece of thin cardboard or thick paper stock and just start testing it out and start cutting and holding it up to where you're gonna mount it to check for, for size. The main consideration here is to make sure that you can move your saw up and down and tilt it even with this blade guard on. So for me, I decided I just wanna be able to raise it and lower it. So in the event that I'm gonna do a miter cut, I'm gonna just have to take these back plates off and live with the result. There would just be too much of an opening and too much complexity to be able to handle that. And because I don't do miter cuts very often, I wasn't too concerned about that. Also take consideration of special openings that you might have. For example, in my saw, I have a protrusion here on top that sticks out. And I also have a little piece that will come through when the blade is being raised and lowered. And it's because of the angle of the, the blade assembly that rises and lowers. So once you've got it all working in all the different configurations, you're gonna take your template piece and transfer it to some permanent quarter inch wood or just some really thin stock of some kind. But you're gonna want something with some rigidity because again, the vacuum pressure is gonna be pretty great. And once you're all done, you should have something that looks like this. All right, the next thing you're gonna want to do is to seal off the bottom. I had a totally wide open bottom on my saw, which is where all the dust escaped from. So when I built my new platform, I made sure to put a new piece of plywood that I cut and I made it in the shape of a template that I had bought. So I bought a 14 inch dust collection chute for table saws. And to make that fit, I routed out the bottoms and I added these little tabs. If ever I needed to service the table saw, I could take the insert out and access the bottom of the saw. And when I was done, I could stick the, the entire dust port back on and I can close it all back up with the holding bracket. Okay, so now that your saw is more or less sealed up, now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take some of these magnet sheets and seal off areas like in the front where you have all the, the angle and height adjustment openings on your table saw. Now again, the goal here should not be to completely close it off, but just try to get as close as you can. And because of these areas that are gonna move as your saw moves as well, the magnet sheet is perfect because the magnet sheet you can just move and slide it back on to whatever angle or height you desire. All right, so now you've got your table saw pretty well closed off. The next thing is to improve the dust collection of your shop vac. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual dust collector itself. I have a rigid shop vac. Really any kind of shop vac will do. Just make sure you get a really nice big one. Now this alone would be okay, but the problem would be that these filters would get clogged up really, really quickly. I actually just cleaned mine out. It was really, really nasty. So. That's where this little guy comes in. Now I got the dust deputy, I'll have a link below. I got just the top units. What I did is I actually add a little wooden insert and just to kind of reinforce the plastic lid and that would go on top of the trash can, just like that. And it seats pretty nicely. So this is moved around on this little on this little stand that I made. You'll notice I just used the lid as a template to cut the circle out, added some wheels to it, made a little platform, and now,
I have a little platform for this to roll around on. And the idea is that these two should be kind of fixed together. So what I did is I added some screws here and I have a bungee cord. And of course we've got a little piece of two inch PVC pipe that I used. Now two inch PVC is really close to the duct size for the shop vac, but it's not quite perfect. So on this end, what I did is I took a heat gun and just kind of heated it up and put a pipe clamp around it and kind of tightened it down. And as a result now, it will fit. Just like that. And then this part comes to the top and attaches just like that. And so now that these two are in place, I will bungee them together. And we have a little mobile cart that looks just like this. Now to do a little test of the performance of the dust deputy, let's take the dust out of the bin and vacuum it back up. and the bin is completely empty. And if you're gonna use a shop vac for your dust collection, a dust deputy gets our highest recommendation for about 50 to $100. It is an absolute must have for your dust collection needs. It really makes the entire process really easy, collects all the dust into a bucket. You can just empty whenever you need to. And we recommend emptying it when it gets to about halfway full. And that's about it. All right guys, so there's our rundown of our top table saw dust collection upgrade ideas. You can create these wooden templates. Start with, start with cardboard, create the template, and use wood. I painted it black, you don't have to. To close off the large openings in your table saw. And again, you're not going for perfect. You're gonna have these kinds of openings. Make sure that it can accommodate the table movement when the saw goes up and down. Use any kind of aluminum tape or duct tape to close off where the saw body meets the table to close off those holes. And of course, the most important is if you have a hole in the bottom of your cavity, make sure you fill that up and allow yourself a little in insert for the dust collection port. And of course, if you're gonna go with a shop vac, we highly recommend get the dust deputy, get the kit or the dust deputy by itself, a little bit of work, build your platform, attach those two pieces together. They're gonna become best friends and a huge ally in your workshop. You'll use it for all all your different projects. I roll it around to whatever stand I'm working on, whether it's the table saw or the router table. The router table and the jointer create tons and tons of dust and I definitely have that always on hand for that. And the last thing I wanna bring up about dust collection actually is to create less sawdust. And how you could do that is with a thin kerf table saw blade. So I've actually been looking at a forest thin kerf table saw blade for some time. They're about $100 and they last a really long time and when it's time to resharpen them, maybe after four, three, four or five years, you can send it back to Forest and they'll sharpen them for about 25 bucks. If the average table saw blade is an eighth of an inch, well the Forest thin kerf blade might be 30 or 40% thinner and the result is you'll make less sawdust, you cut less wood and you put less stress on the table saw, all win-win-wins and that's about as thin as you can get without getting too much deflection and wobble in the blade. Also think about getting a thin kerf table saw blade especially if you have a smaller 110 or 120 volt table saw that doesn't have as much power as the big boys a thin curved blade could be just what you need but there you have it guys those are our top tips for dust collection for your table saw well hopefully if you liked it guys give us a like share this video thumbs up subscribe we'll keep all this good content coming and as always we'll catch you guys next time